everyone, it's Hunter and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, it is so nice to meet you. In today's video, I am giving you guys another book video. I have been making so many book videos recently. Honestly, I'm loving it and I hope you guys are too. So what I'm doing is sharing with you guys my top eight favorite books of all time so far uh, because obviously I am not dead yet. So I cannot decide what my favorites are because I haven't read them all. But of all the books I've read so far, these are my favorite. So if you don't know, I love reading. It's one of my favorite things to do and I have read a lot of books in the last couple of years so I wanted to share what my favorites are because maybe I'll inspire you to read a new book if you haven't read them or even heard of them so before we get started please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below that would really help me out also if you guys want to follow me on Instagram that'd be super awesome and lastly if you guys could give this video a thumbs up it lets YouTube know you like this video and it will push it to more people which will help my channel grow and that would be super helpful as well so let's get on with the books so these books are a combination of different genres. They're not all the same genre. There's just regular adult fiction. There's historical fiction. There's young adult fiction. Literally so many different things, but they are all fiction books. I prefer fiction over nonfiction. So if you're looking for nonfiction, there's none on here. So sorry about that. Um, also, I literally only have one physical copy of all these books because I, the one I bought, I bought, when did I buy it? How did I buy it? It was like on clearance or something. So I bought it because I'd already read it and I was like, this is my favorite book. So I bought it. Um, all the others, I don't have physical copies of. I read them on Kindle. Either I own them on Kindle or I borrowed them from the library because we love doing that. And also my taste in books has changed over time so I made a video like this a couple years ago as a assignment for school and now here I am making it again but for real this time. So let me get my list. And of course I have to have a list because I don't have the physical copies. My list is on this paper. So let's go. Very first book on this list. You know what? I want to read you the description of these books so let me just let me just look them up while I'm doing it. Also while I'm thinking about it while I'm looking this up if you guys want to follow me on Goodreads. You can keep up with my books there because I upload on Goodreads all the time. Okay, the first book on this list I first read in high school as an assignment and then I decided to reread it because I knew it was really good then but I have such a greater appreciation for it as an adult than I did as a teenager. It is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Kolod Husseini. No idea if I'm pronouncing that right and if I'm not I'm so sorry but literally the most tragic, beautiful, sad, emotional book I have ever read in my life. It's literally so so good. I'd probably read it again today. So here's the description. I read it last April for the second time. So A Thousand Splendid Sons is a breathtaking story set from the volatile events of Afghanistan's last 30 years from the Soviet invasion to the reign of the Taliban to post-Taliban rebuilding that puts the violent fear, hope, and faith of this country in intimate human terms. It is a table, table, stupid. It is a tale of two generations of characters brought jarringly together by the tragic sweep of war or personal lives the struggle to survive, raise a family, find happiness, are inextricable from the history playing out around them. It's a story about two women who have nothing to do with each other and their paths cross and it is literally the most heartbreaking story ever but it is beautiful. It is so beautifully written. I would recommend reading it on Kindle because you can look at the definition of words if you don't understand. You can see the pronunciation if that's important to you when you're reading but it is an absolutely beautiful book and I would recommend it to literally anybody. It is so good and also I do feel like there are parts of it that maybe are not appropriate for young readers, if you're an adult, or even just a teenager. I feel like you're good. So that's the first book. The next book is Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. Napolitano. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so basically, um, I'm gonna read the description real quick. One summer morning, 12-year-old Edward Adler, his beloved older brother, parents, and 183 other passengers board a flight in Newark headed for Los Angeles. Among them is a Wall Street wonderkind, a young woman coming to terms with an unexpected pregnancy, an injured vet returning from Afghanistan, a septuagenarian business tycoon, and a free-spirited woman running away from her controlling husband. And then tragically the plane crashes. Edward is the sole survivor. Literally so good. I read this one actually not too long ago. Let me see when I finished it. I read this at the end of May so it was only like not that long ago and it was so good because it's basically Edward is coming to terms with what's happened. It goes back and forth from the perspective of like time passing after the crash for Edward and then also the moments leading up to the crash in the plane and like on the day the plane crashed and going back and forth like you know what's gonna happen to these people but they don't know. So you also get the heartbreaking stories of these people 
people who, you know, are trying to start their lives or do something new or running away from something or whatever, and they have no idea that their lives are about to end. But then Edward has to, you know, move on with his life and the fact that everyone in his family died in this crash, along with all the other people on this plane, and he's the last person who saw 183 people alive. So it's, it's so good and him coming to terms with it and just everything about it is so good. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So next is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I read this one in high school. When did I read this? I don't remember. Does it say when I read this? No, there are no dates, but I give this five out of five. Let me read the description. Also, there is a movie on Netflix, but the movie's not as good as the book. Just keep that in mind. The Fault in Our Stars meets Eleanor and Park in this exhilarating and heart-wrenching love story about a girl who learns to live from a boy who intends to die. Theodore Finch is fascinated by death. Also, trigger warning, by the way. Trigger warning. Trigger. I'm sorry, I didn't say it sooner. There's a trigger warning. Theodore Finch is fascinated by death. Constantly think of ways he might kill himself. But each time, something good, no matter how small, stops him. Violet Markey lives for the future, counting her days until graduation when she can escape her Indiana town and her aching grief in the wake of her sister's recent death. When Violet and Finch meet on the ledge of a bell tower at school, it's unclear who saves whom. And when they pair up on a project to discover the natural wonders of their state, both Violet and Finch make more important discoveries. It's only when Violet, with Violet, that Finch can be himself, a weird, funny, live out loud guy who's not much of a freak after all. And it's only when Finch, that, with Finch, that Violet can forget to count away the days and start living them. But as Violet's world grows, Finch just begins to shrink. It's literally, like, it, these people are depressed. These people are depressed. And as someone who has experienced that feeling before, maybe not suicidal thoughts, but who has experienced the feeling of depression before, I feel like it is so real and raw in those emotions. And I think that it really gives a good representation of what it feels like to be depressed, even if you're not suicidal. Very good. One of my, one of the first books that I ever claimed as my favorite. It's so good and definitely worth a read. It is a young adult novel. And like I said, trigger warning, but I think it's so good. Next is a trilogy, but I needed to include all three of them. This is counting as one instead of three to make this number eight, but Crazy Rich Asians Trilogy by Kevin Kwan. First and foremost, I'm not gonna read the description of all of them, just the first one. So let me go ahead and read it for you real quick. Also, in the trilogy, there are three books. They're called Crazy Rich Asians, China Rich Girlfriend, and Rich People Problems, but I'm reading the description of the first one. And I feel like this is a very good description of it. Crazy Rich Asians is the outrageously funny debut novel about three super rich pedigreed Chinese families and the gossip, backbiting, and scheming that occurs when the heir to one of the most massive fortunes in Asia brings home his ABC, American-born Chinese girlfriend, to the wedding of the season. When Rachel Chu agrees to spend the summer in Singapore with her boyfriend, Nicholas Young, she envisions a humble family home, long drives to explore the island, and quality time with the man she might one day marry. What she doesn't know is that Nick's family home happens to look like a palace that she'll ride in more private planes than cars, and that with one of Asia's most eligible bachelors on her arm, Rachel might as well have a target on her back. Initiated into a world of dynastic, dynastic splendor, beyond imagination, Rachel meets Astrid, the it girl of Singapore society, Eddie, whose family practically lives in the pages of the Hong Kong socialite magazines, and Eleanor, a formidable mother, a woman who has very strong feelings about her, who her son should and should not marry. Uproarious, addictive, and jaw, excuse me, filled with jaw-dropping opulent, Crazy Rich Asians is an insider's look at the Asian jet set, a perfect depiction of the clash between old money and new money, between overseas Chinese and mainland Chinese, and a fabulous novel about it when it means to be young in love and gloriously, crazily rich. I do not know what it is like to be that rich because I am a middle-class American. However, reading the book, the descriptions of everything, the author also puts in like little commentary bits. Um, So he'll like put a number. I don't know, it's like a reference, I guess. Um, He'll put like a little number and put like commentary in the back of the chapter. Literally the funniest I read, but also there's like a love, obviously there's a love story because Rachel and Nicholas are together, but it's so good, filled with drama. And you just like want to laugh at how funny these people are because it's just, that's really all I can say to describe it. And the second and third book just continue the story. Obviously things happen. So like next is a beautiful book that I read around Christmas time because it's called One Day in December. So let me pull that up for you. I'm pretty sure, oh, it's by Josie Silver. I'm pretty sure this book was like a book of the month book from book of the month, but I decided to just buy it on Kindle and I read it and it was so cute. So let me redo the description. Two people, 10 chances. One unforgettable love story. Laurie is pretty sure it's uh, sure love at first sight doesn't exist anywhere but the movies. But then through a misted up bus window one snowy December day, she meets a man who she knows is instantly the one. Sees a man, not meets. Their eyes meet, there's a moment of pure magic, and then her bus drives away. Certain they're fated to find each other again, Laurie spends a year scanning every bus stop and cafe in London for him. But she doesn't find him, not when it, but she doesn't find him, not when it matters anyway. Instead, they reunite at a Christmas party when her best friend, Sarah, giddily introduces her new boyfriend to Laurie. It's Jack, the man from the bus. It would be. What follows for Laurie, what am I saying? Okay, it's Jack, the man from the bus. It would be. 
What follows for Laurie, Sarah, and Jack is 10 years of friendship, heartbreak, missed opportunities, roads not taken, and destinies can reconsidered. It's just like a really cute book. It's just really cute. I think it's so cute that it deserves to be in my top eight books. That's all I gotta say. The next book is Everything Everything by Nicole Yoon. And I read this one last summer as well. A lot of the books I read last year were like, basically I saw that this book, movie? This movie? Is it book? I saw this movie. No, I didn't see the movie first. I read it first. Annoying. So here's the description. A disease is as rare as it, it my disease is as rare as it is famous. A form of severe combined immunodeficiency, but basically I'm allergic to the world. I don't leave my house, have not left my house in 15 years. The only person I see are my mom and my nurse Carla. But then one day a moving truck arrives, my next door, new next door neighbors. I look out the window and I see him. He's tall, lean, and wearing all black, black t-shirt, black jeans, black converse, and a knit black cap that covers his hair completely. He catches me looking at and stares at me. I stare right back. His name is Ollie. I want to learn everything about him and I do. I learned that he's funny and fierce. I learned that his eyes are the Atlantic Ocean blue and his boy vice is stealing silverware. I learned that when I talk to him, my world opens up and I feel myself start to change, starting to want things, to want out of my bubble, to want everything, everything the world has to offer. Maybe we can't predict the future, but we can predict some things. For example, I am certain I'm going to fall in love with Ollie. It's almost certainly going to be a disaster. Just the way that they learn about each other and the relationship that they develop while she's stuck in this bubble. I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautifully written. Um, I've read other books by her, but this is my favorite one. So I think it's very good. I am mad that the movie is not exactly like the book. What can I say? I read this one, this next one at the end of last year and literally it broke me. I cried so much at the end of it. It is, it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. I've read so many of her books, but I think this one is my favorite just because it like, I felt so many emotions at the end of it. So sometimes it is the one who loves you, who hurts you the most. Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She's come a long way from a small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston and started her own business. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kincaid, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn, and maybe even a little arrogant. He's also sensitive, brilliant, and has a total soft spot for Lily. And the way he looks and scrubs certainly doesn't hurt. Lily can't get him out of her head, but Ryle's complete aversion to relationships is disturbing. Even as Lily finds herself becoming the exception to his no dating rule, she can't help but wonder what made him the way that way in the first place. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Alice Corrigan, her first love and link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. But Alice, Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily built with Ryle is threatened. It's absolutely beautiful. Like I said, I cried so much. Also, the sun has completely disappeared from the sky. So I'm super dark right now. I'm sorry, I wanted it to be better. <sighs> I tried. But anyway, it was a really sad book. I cried a lot. And every single person that posts a picture of this book on their Instagram, I tell them that they're gonna cry, to be prepared to cry. I don't cry at the end of a lot of books, but I definitely was very crying at the end of this one. Two more books and then we'll be done with this little list of mine. I'm sure you guys have all heard of this next book, but, and it has a lot of hype, but it's like 100% worth the hype in my opinion. It's Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I read this at the beginning of this year. I think it's so good. The end of the book left me shook, completely shook. I was like, <gasps> shook. For years, rumors of the marsh girl haunted Barkley Cove, a quiet fishing village. Kaya Clark is barefoot and wild, unfit for polite society. So in late 1969, when the popular Chase Andrews is found dead, locals immediately suspect her. But Kaya is not what they say. A born naturalist with just one day of school, she takes life lessons from the land, learning the real ways of the world from the dishonest signals of fireflies. While she has the skills to live in solitude forever, the time comes when she yearns to be touched in love. Drawn to two young men from town, where each are intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya opens herself to a new and star startling world. Until the unthinkable happened. In Where the Crawdads Sing, Owen juxtaposes an exquisite ode to natural world against a profound coming-of-age story and haunting mystery. Thought-provoking, wise, and deeply moving, Owen's debut novel reminds us that we are forever shaped by the child within us while also subject to the beautiful and violent secrets that nature keeps. The story asks how isolation influences the behavior of a young woman who, like all of us, has the genetic propensity to belong to a group. The clues to the mystery are brushed into the lush habitat and natural histories of its wild creatures. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it because so many people People said they liked it. <laughs> Why? Why did I think I wasn't gonna like it? Because other people said they liked it. I know that it was super popular. It was on Reese's book club, Reese Witherspoon's book club, but it was 100% worth the hype in my opinion. I borrowed it from the library. Very good. Five out of five. And the last book on this list. Also, I forgot to mention, these are in no particular order. And the last book on this list is This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. When did I read this one? I read this one February. So in this warm-hearted love story for fans of One Day in December, also on this list, a man and woman
women who were born at the same hospital on New Year's Day meet on their 30th birthday and discover the many times their paths almost crossed before. Down to earth baker Minnie Cooper knows two things with great certainty, that her New Year's birthday has always been unlucky and that it's all because of Quinn Hamilton, a man she's never met. Minnie and Quinn were born at the same hospital just after midnight on New Year's Day 30 years before. And not only did he hedge, edge her out by being by mere minutes to win the cash prize for being the first baby born in London in 1990, but he also stole the name she was meant to have as well. With luck like that, it's no wonder each of her birthdays has been more of a disaster than the one before. When Minnie unexpectedly runs into Quinn at a New Year's party on their mutual 30th birthday, she sees only more evidence that fortune has continued to favor him. The handsome, charming business owner truly seems to have it all, including the perfect girlfriend. But if Quinn and Minnie are from different worlds, why do they keep bumping into each other? And why is it that each frustrating interaction seems to leave them both hoping for more? I just thought it was really cute. Like, I think that the, the stories were very well interwoven, like them crossing paths and just like knowing that they could have met each other sooner. I just think the whole thing, it's, it's filled with a lot of irony, I guess. And I'm a big fan of irony and foreshadowing and things like that. So I don't know. I just thought it was really nicely written. And so those are my top eight favorite books of all time so far. So um, I may do an updated list of this at some point in the future. It's probably gonna be a while just because I like books and I read a lot of books, but why I picked eight, I don't know. I just started writing down books that I loved and I came with the number eight. So if you've read all of these books or if you haven't read any of these books and you want to read more or want to read a similar book, um, I would highly recommend just checking out those authors and seeing what else they write because Nicola Yoon has other books out. Kevin Kwan has another book out. I think it's pretty new. Delia Owens doesn't yet. Um, Jennifer Niven does. She has a couple of other books. I'm not sure how many though. Josie Silver has another book that's really cute. Basically, whenever I see an author, I don't read the description. I just download it if I recognize the author. And anything by Colleen Hoover is worth a read. Super good. So that's all I have for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.